All right. So I, a couple of work colleagues told me over the years that like you couldn't write good multi-dimensional iterators that would uh, vectorize that would let you write code that would vectorize well. Uh, and so I took on this challenge. Um, so like I have a lot of colleagues who write code like this, and I actually write a lot of code that looks like this. But it actually looks worse. It looks like this. Um, but it actually looks worse than this. But it, that won't fit on the slide. Uh, but like this, like generates like really nice assembly, and like it's fast and it's good and super unsafe. But like we like we like code that looks like this. Um, but like this is horrific. I really don't like this. One of the reasons I don't like this is because if I ne need to go change the iteration order or I need to change the data layout, like that is not an easy thing to do. It means I have to go like rewrite this entire function. That's not fun. But multi-dimensional iterators are hard. So they abstract for loops, and compilers are, are sort of designed to recognize for loops and then put them into a canonical form that they understand. But uh, this is sort of hard when your for loop is abstracted into an iterator like this. All the compiler sees is like, hey, there's some back edge in your loop, like in, in your, the innermost loop here. I don't know what to do with this. I'm just going to give up on trying to vectorize your loop. And uh, I've uh, tried really hard to make something like this work. So like I've, I've tried element-based iterators. I've tried index-based iterators. There's one approach that does work, segmented iterators. There was a paper written about it in like 2006 or so. And, and it works really nicely, but it requires you to uh, rewrite your algorithms to use this particular uh, interface. It's, like not, it's, a, it's an iterator sort of conceptually, but it's not really an iterator. Um, so I've tried a bunch, a whole bunch of other things. I've tried doing it sort of range style, and I, I, there's the caveat here because with an iterator sentinel index pair, I was able to get the Intel compiler to vectorize the code, but it vectorized the indexing operations instead of the actual math. <laughs> <laughs> so that wasn't great. Uh, so I, I have I have uh, this thing uh, called generate indices. <coughs> And uh, I, I tell it some, some uh, I want it to generate from 0 to some number for you know, some number of extents here. So like if I say generate indices for these three numbers, it'll give me this thing, which is a range. Uh, and then it'll give me these iterators. And the elements that these things iterate over are these indices. And then like here's the same thing that I had in that ugly code before. And so this is actually not as like, nice as it could be. Like, I like this much better. This is fairly pretty. <laughs> Sorry. Um, oops. <laughs> so like this code right here, this is pretty nice. This is much easier if I need to change the iteration order or like one of the, the, the data structures, data layouts here. Like I can just change it. Like I can change it in one of these magical struct things that I'm not going to talk about it. And the iteration order can be picked by this thing here. The cool thing is this code here uh, gives me identical assembly to the original awful code that I showed, with a caveat here that there's a few small things that I'm not th included in here that are necessary to get there, but I'm, I'm working on just making this work out of the box. Now, how does this work? Uh, the answer is coroutines. So this is what generate indices looks like. So I've got three nested for loops here, and then I have a co-yield in the center here. And what the compiler does is it takes these loops right here, and it basically just dumps them in right here. And I, I, I could explain, but I don't really. I only have a minute left. But basically, there's a whole bunch of coroutine optimization magic that will take a coroutine, and when it can see where it's used, and it can see the definition of the coroutine, and it can figure out that hey, I don't need to. Uh, I don't need to have this coroutine have heap storage. I can just. I can. Uh, you like put it in place, I can inline it, I can devirtualize it, and it just like magically vanishes. Gore gave a whole talk about it last year, and it works really, really well. So this is my, the basis for my really nifty multidimensional iterator. It uses coroutines in, in Gore's uh, branch of Clang. That's all.